You getting sick of seeing this thing yet? Well, me too. The 5.5 Gen is a great iPod. There's no denying that. You know, every iPod has its strengths. I mean, we've got the 4th Gen, the 2nd Gen, and the topic of today's video, the Mini. Now, out of all of these different iPods, there's only one that doesn't belong. This might help. <laughs> it's monochrome. They, all of these other ones are monochrome. This one's color. That's That was the difference. Why do I love the Mini so much, despite it being harder to work on than the others, and, you know, being monochrome just like the rest of those other ones I had out? Well, the answer is simple. The Mini has the best monochrome screen. I mean, it's either the Mini or the third gen, if you ask me. And the third gen is bigger, so people might consider bigger better, and therefore the third gen would be the superior model, but I love the Mini, I love the dad clip, I love everything about it. Forget what people tell you about the Mini. They're not as easy to work on as people would have you believe. But they're not impossible either. I mean, all those other ones, they have replacement batteries already, but this guy, I've been holding off on it. So with all that said, I have a very special video today for you, because we're not just here to talk about the Mini, we're here to upgrade the mini baby. So in a lot of cases, the process all starts with your storage medium. You're going between compact flash to regular SD and finally ending with the real medium here, which is micro SD, uh, specifically micro SD XC. The more adapters you have in line, the more potential points of failure. But the very first thing to consider is your medium, your actual, you know, storage. Is it of decent quality? Um, a lot of times these things will go wrong for two reasons. Either one, it's actually still very possible to get counterfeit SD cards on places like Amazon these days. It's not good. Um, so make sure you have really decent quality uh, medium. I like Lexar, I like Samsung, although they're more uh, popular to be counterfeited than I think anyone else. Um, but yeah, Lexar I find is like the safest bet um, just cause they're not a super popular brand. So they're not often counterfeited, um, but yet they're still relatively decent quality. So Lexar is my go-to, but you can use anything as long as it meets that criteria. The next thing to consider is the adapter you're using. Now, a lot of micro SDs that are of decent quality come with decent quality adapters to regular SD. That's fine. Um, but you know, if you are using some old one from who knows when, might not be that great. The more conversions you have to your ultimate format, uh, the more points of failure in the connection. So if you could just find yourself an appropriate size regular SD card, maybe start there. Or that being said, compact flash. Again, there's no reason that you can't do this with a regular compact flash card. So if you're willing to drop the money for like a daily driver iPod, you might just be better off buying yourself a legitimate full-blown 256 gig compact flash, although they are substantially more expensive than this method. Um, that being said, this is an genuine iFlash, uh, there you go, iFlash um, SD to compact flash conversion card. Get the iFlash. I don't care what anyone tells you. I don't care if there are decent reviews. I just, look, these things, they take a long time to arrive from the UK, but they are reliable. That's what you want, right? You want this thing to work? You want this to be worth something? The $150 that are on this table, pretty much? Just just spend the extra 10 bucks. It's 10 it's 10 extra dollars if you get them directly from iFlash compared to the, you know, the cheapies on Amazon. So, we've discussed the medium. The next step is getting these properly set up to work with each other. You'd think it'd be as easy as taking your SD card out of its little package, but no, no, you have to format them. Uh, this one I wrote format okay, because I already did it, but yeah, you have to do a little trickery because these come uh, usually as XFAT partition and the iPod can't read XFAT. It needs uh, FAT32. Now, normally that wouldn't be a problem, but in a lot of systems, you can't actually format these to FAT32 out of the box because it's such a dilapidated old file system. No one thinks that you would want it, but you do want it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that properly. First problem I see people, uh, first problem I see people running into with these things is how to hook it up to your computer. Now, yeah, you know, you can get one of these like generic, but like, okay, this is a Dynex unit. Um, I think that was a Walmart brand. Um, so yeah, your first thought might be to go find one of these old manky uh, things and, you know, 
plug this in and start doing all of your formatting work, but you know what? I find that, you know, this is a good one. I This reads almost anything that I've plugged into it. I like this thing. I keep it around, but yeah, it's just... <sighs> Something about these SDXC cards, they really prefer modern card readers. Um, so if you have an older one like this around, I just, you can try, but I wouldn't play with it. I would just, you know, I would just bite the bullet and either find a machine that has integral SD. Um, for example, we do have the A1286. So that one does have a full blown SD. I haven't tried it with this though, because my primary machine that I do this with because of the guide on iFlash is my uh, business laptop, uh, a 7392 in one, I don't know. But the thing I want is this micro SD card slot right there. Um, this is also why I go with micro SD uh, as opposed to full size SD is because this is my method and it works. It shows up as an SDXC in Windows. That's what you want to be seeing. You want it to be acknowledging that it's an SDXC not just an XD, uh, an SD, excuse me. And here we are on the laptop ready for the next step. So as you can see, SDXC, here we go. We got the AOMEI. I'm gonna link this in the description below so that you can have easy access to it. Oh, look, they got a Christmas sale, ooh. Oh no, oh no, I made it worse. Okay, uh, back to our regularly scheduled tutorial here. As you can see, we have this FAT32 236 gig. This is our SD card, disc one. It's gonna usually be an MBR disc, not a GPT disc, which is more common these days. But you know, as always, make sure that you know which disc is which before you go ahead and do anything on this because you can cause permanent damage to either your system or to the disc if you do something improper or, you know, choose the wrong disc. Your computer might not boot anymore. So, you know, use caution. Um, with that said, once you're sure that you have your SD card, the very first thing that we're going to need to do is rebuild the MBR. Um, you're going to want to leave it at the default setting here uh, and then hit OK. Now that isn't actually going to do anything yet. As you can see, what it's done is put an apply option up here at the top. It's going to apply one change. Uh, so we're going to do that and it's going to say, OK, you want to rebuild the MBR for hard disk one. Uh, and yeah, yeah. The reason why we want to do that is because this will set a standard Windows MBR record, master boot record, um, to this SD card. Why do that? Well, some SD cards come with a strange master boot record, let's call it, that might, uh, you know, have some issues working with the iPod. Uh, once that's done, it's going to say, oh, yeah, it's going to warn me about me not being hooked up to a power adapter. Yeah, it's fine. Just go. We've got more than enough battery life to get her done. Okay, congratulations, it's been done. It's usually that fast. Uh, again, this is FAT32 for me, it'll say XFAT for you. Delete the partition, that's all we wanna do. Just delete, don't worry about wiping data. Wiping data basically you know, fills the sectors and stuff. We don't wanna do that. We just wanna get rid of whatever partition uh, it has assigned in whatever um, file system it has assigned it. And then it should just be unallocated and you should see the full space of your SD card available. If that's not the case, rebuild the MBR again. Sometimes this can get messed up and it will say like 128 gigs unallocated or something else weird here, maybe like two terabytes. Um, at that point, you just need to rebuild the MBR a second time and it should get back to the proper capacity. Oh, sorry, we have to apply, right? I forgot. Yeah, we wanna get rid of that FAT32 partition. We have to apply it. So yeah, again, we have battery. Yes, do it. Okay, great. So now it is unallocated. Okay, so then we click the unallocated space here as assuming it's correct, like I said, and then create a partition. And then it's gonna ask us how big we want it, what drive letter we want it to be, and what file system. The only thing we really care about here is the file system. We want it FAT32 and yeah, the whole partition. Okay, so from there, it should, again, we have to apply, apply, proceed, yes. Sorry, they're doing something out there. Uh, and yeah, there we go. It's gonna go through and apply our change, making a properly formatted SD card. You might've noticed that there's two of these though. That's cause I got two minis. <laughs> um, this one's going to a client. Um, that's why it's, you know, already pre-disassembled and uh, in a clear little, 
clear little container and this is the one I'm keeping. Um, but both of them need battery replacement and uh, flash conversion. Um, despite this one appearing to work, it uh, its drive is definitely on the way out because it'll, it'll freeze. Um, and then the only way to get it to respond again is to uh, reboot it completely. So I'm going to unbox the client buddy here. I'm just gonna, gonna have to, there's some sticky, sticky stuff in here. Yeah, uh, all right. The actual main board, this is the guy we want. Uh, I'm gonna put the rest of the parts back in here. We need the SD ribbon as well. From here, we're gonna reattach our hard drive ribbon. It's a Lego brick style connection. All right, so that's in appropriately. Uh, and then we're just going to plug in our formatted, freshly formatted SD into our iFlash adapter. It should only fit one way. Great. And then we're going to need to attach it to the ribbon. The iFlash adapter logo should be facing towards the back of the iPod. Yeah, make sure the logo is facing towards so the adapter should be plugged in like a so. Sometimes this is easier to do before you actually plug in the ribbon cable um, so that you don't rip it. I'm going to do that. Well, at first I thought it was something I did, but uh, looking at that cap right there, I'm going to say that's probably our issue. Uh, nothing to do with our... Um, our hard drive ribbon. So yeah, man, that's a shame. I'm gonna have to fix that. On the uh, on the one hand, it's fun because I get to bust out my soldering iron for the first time for you guys. So that's awesome, right? A little bit of flux on the part we wish to remove right off the board. Okay, good, sweet. Sorry about the noise, but a lot of soldering fumes are carcinogenic. So I'm gonna open my window, turn on the fan. You know, it's not ideal protection, but it's the best I have. So I'm, uh, I'm going for it. Never, uh, never apply solder to your iron over the project, by the way a little on the tip and go on in for extraction. The very first thing I want to be aware of is, is there any side components that are real close to it? No, it doesn't look like it. However, this part could be like fused to the board because of its failure. It might be so catastrophic that it welded itself, but nope. As you can see, I got half of it off right there. Just throw that in there. And the other half is still attached to the board, but that's okay. It'll come off, I think. Ugh, in pieces, but nonetheless, it's off. Okay, so that's left us with two nice pads. <clears throat> it's always easier to move your piece than to move your hand. There we go. So fresh soldered pads and our bad part is now off. But that doesn't fix our problem. We still gotta replace that piece with a replacement cap. I'm gonna go with one of these old uh, GPU caps. Uh, one of the bigger ones here, just because, you know, I feel like these are overkill in every way from what the cap on that board had to deal with, which means that there is a high chance, a higher chance that something like this will work. So will this actually work? I have zero idea, but we're gonna give it a shot. So we're gonna take our cap right there. Nice and happy on those pads. Apply a little bit of fluxadoodle. And we're gonna throw it in place and hope for the best. So. Go oh, one side in, tack in the other. Okay, that's it. Come on, don't make me look like a fool now. You were just doing it. Oh, come on. Come on, show the logo, show the folder, the folder icon. We're just gonna try hooking this up to a PC. Ah, there it is, there it is, the folder icon, the folder icon. That's what you wanna see. Oh my God. Okay, great, so we're good. We just need to plug this back into its shell and call it a day. Uh, I lied. So there is a little bit more you gotta do if you ask me. Um, from this point, we're ready for tape. So we need, uh, I really like this stuff. This is called Kapton tape. It's like a film 
uh, that has a sticky side. It's like a film, essentially, like like old school, like photography film, um, turned into a tape. It's really, really useful for electronic stuff because it's also extremely heat resistant. It's just the only pain is finding the end of it. Yeah, you're always gonna waste a little bit when you're working with this stuff. But now we just wanna apply this captain tape to the eye flash around the micro SD and down onto the other side. This should just hopefully help insulate it from jostles or anything that might wanna knock that card out of the slot should now just be a little bit more resisted to. And we're just going to quickly plug it back in to ensure that that application has not adjusted our folder icon. Nope, still getting folder. Great, just what we want. So battery goes between the headphone jack and the drive. It can be a little difficult to place. It's a very tight fit, but something like that. I find you just lift this side just a little bit. And I also put a small piece of this like alien tape. It's just a tacky one uh, double-sided tape. It's like thick, kind of like, there's a bit of it right there. As you can see, it's pretty girthy. It's like a, it's like a stick gel almost. And that's what I use on the back of batteries. You always want to be really, really careful when reassembling the mini because you don't want to end up shorting it out. Actually, before I even do that, I'm just going to reconfirm for a final time that I have a folder icon. Okay, cool. And now it's stuck on, that was a bad idea. Okay, so the most important thing when it comes to reassembling the Mini is these caps down here on the edge of the board. Um, there is a plate there that holds the hold button and essentially you've got to slide the board past that um, home button without catching it on that plate because if you do it's catching on those caps so it's hard to display that to you but right there the board's making contact and that's gonna possibly rip off those caps that's what we want to avoid oh I got it slide in this will be the last chance to get rid of any fingerprints or dust so I just touched the screen there I'm gonna get rid of that might need to get back in there one more time Yeah. But we're in the home stretch now. So much easier to take apart than it is to put back together. Ah, and that's it. She's in. Now we just gotta connect this uh, hold uh, the, the switch and put the base in the top back on and, and we're pretty much there. <clears throat> and now that we're relatively safe, I'm just going to attach the click wheel and then attempt to reformat the the um, iPod because, yeah, there we go, that's in. So now that that's done, now's a great time to test and uh, see if you have any just absolutely gaudy fingerprints under the screen. Looks like we don't, we look pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to now plug it into the Mac and see what we get. So it took a little fiddling with uh, disk utility. I had to uh, attempt to format the iPod again. It gave me a warning to not do so. I did so anyway. It failed, but iTunes has detected that the iPod is corrupted and can be restored. So we're gonna give that a go. Sometimes you do have to mess around with these things and and you know do things that seem like really bad ideas, uh, and then eventually uh, you might get uh, you might get lucky. Come on, go baby, go baby, go baby. Yeah, that's what we want to see. Yeah, there we go. Let's do it. 233 gigabytes. Format Macintosh. Do not disconnect. Let's do it. Let's let's disconnect it. Look at all that free space. 
Um, that's the perfect time to finish but buttoning this up because the glue that is involved in this is super old and tired and we want to preserve it as much as possible by keeping it away from dust and debris and heating it minimally. So the next thing to go in is this clip. Um, this really works a lot better with a pair of snap ring pliers. It's a lot safer that way. Um, oops, and the adhesive, sorry, the adhesive goes on the outside. So we'd want it to be like so. And I find um, you can either hook through a pair of pliers on one end, or uh, tweezers, excuse me, like so, and pull down. Just need, the bottom is already set. Just need to get that started. And then pull down the other and just go kind of back and forth. And then eventually that's it. This side's in, that side's in, done. Uh, that simple. So easier with the snap ring, but not impossible without. And we just throw the bottom connector on the correct way. Okay, so I had to CA glue on uh, one of the old broken clips and that caused a bit of a height difference that I've since taken care of. So it's, it's very flush now. Not quite as inset, but it's very, very close to what it was. So now we need to um, uh, heat blast this a little bit. We don't want to use anything ridiculous. We're talking like 100C just to, um, just to reaffirm that glue. Uh, and then uh, that side's ready to go. And then same deal with the top. We just want to get that glue nice and warm. Oh, uh, I see a little spot where it's peeled a little. I'm gonna try to put that back down before I continue. You wanna rush, you do, but you shouldn't. Actually, I just realized that the backside near the hold switch also has a piece of raised glue. Get it mounted flush. You only get one shot at this, so it's important to get it right. Otherwise, uneven and unappealing, which nobody wants. I'm gonna try going in with the hold switch flush to start because of that small dent in the corner. And now it's flush. Beauty. All right, we've let her charge for quite a little bit here. And yep, she's working fine. Click wheel, uh, 230 gigs noticed. Looks great. Awesome. So yeah, it's obvious that I've been in here. But unfortunately, um, without getting replacement adhesive, um, which is hard to find, that's uh, the correct thickness for this. Um, that's what you live with. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to have a new lease on life and none of these should pop off through regular use. So a perfect mini. So thank you for watching, everybody. I uh, hope you appreciate the, the guide and um, I hope uh, my buddy's going to enjoy this mini. That's it for this one. Thanks.